Hi, I'm Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden Blooms and I want to welcome you all to my channel. Today's video is going to be just a little different. I did receive a tip from one of my subscribers that said, why don't you kill two birds with one stone? Why don't you uh, come up with a video or this will be your video of the week and you can show us how you make your, you know, some of your stuff in bulk when you're getting ready for your shows. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to roll with it. So I went and I, you're going to see that I bought all my lumber in bulk. Um, and I'm just going to walk you through on one of the signs that I do make and how I complete it and how I produce it and just give you some tips along the way. Um, so if you are getting ready for a show and you want to also produce things in bulk, you're able to do that. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Uh, my channel is really about DIY, um, furniture flipping, really the day in the life of a small business owner. So if you like those kind of videos, like I said, go ahead, hit uh, the subscribe button. And if you like today's video, hit the like button as well. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That way every Monday and Friday, when I do put out a video, you'll be notified. And at the end, tell me one thing that you found useful that I showed you today. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And so here I'm pulling into the local Menards. Uh, for a while, the folks actually knew me by my first name because I came here so often. Um, during COVID though, not so much. And I've been really holding off because the price of lumber has gone up. But the first thing I see here, look at that, 11% rebate makes me feel a whole lot better. And then to my surprise, $8.99 a board. I'm saving myself 20 cents. So I went to the lumber store and I ended up getting enough boards to make my signs. Um, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna maximize uh, the amount of wood from each board uh, for many of my different projects. Uh, like $400 later though, folks, uh, there you have it. Although the price of the one by six by 10 has gone down from 919 a board to 99 I saved 20 cents a board. So yeah. So uh, with the price of wood, we are going to try to maximize as many projects out of a piece of wood. So I always try to take, uh, make as little as, or I should say as few cuts as possible. So I always cut two boards at one time on my saw, just um, so that I, I used to just cut one board at a time and it seemed like I was cutting boards forever. So now I put two boards on there and that is the most that I cut at one time. So out of these two boards, uh, they are one by six by tens. I am going to get one of my tall home signs that I'm going to be painting. I am going to get um, two boards towards a barn quilt. And I am also going to get two uh, six by six little mini barn quilt signs. So here I have cut all the boards for the home signs and I laid everything out and I'm doing the painting. So with these signs, I paint um, just the fronts and the edges. And then on the back to make them complete, I stain them. Uh, after they dry, then I take them all and I line them all up and I screw on the cross members so that it holds them all together. And I just go right down the line one by one um, and complete it. Now, when I went to cut all my boards, I just want to mention that out of those two boards, I ended up getting two home signs. So I know I said I got one. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so I ended up maximizing all of that out of the one board or the two boards that I had cut. So by doing this, I really uh, save a lot of time. I uh, wanted to just show you too that uh, at the same time um, when I was painting, I ended up going ahead uh, and painting all the barn quilts the same color, the boards for the barn quilts, and the boards for these home signs. Uh, then what I did is I went ahead and I distressed them um, to give them that just a nice distressed look. 
And after this, then what I am going to do is I'm going to um, finish the back side and then also just put a little of my distressing mixture that I use over the top. Well, it's getting dark and I'm a bit tired, but I ended up getting all of these and all of those all done. So I thought I actually had eight of these barn quilt blanks, but apparently I only made seven. Um, I also mass produced 20 of the gray. I have the white um, for these. I have the white already all cut uh, and it is ready to go. I also used up all the excess material and um, these are for little mini barn quilts, so just uh, tiny ones. Uh, and those go over really well too. So I did those and then these I started, um, I painted them, distressed them, and here uh, I will make, um, it will say home the long way, but the O will be actually the state of Wisconsin. And uh, so I have those set. Uh, did a lot of prep work today. So basically I ran to Menards, got all the wood, cut all the wood, then painting, um, and then assembling. Uh, and so I am, my next step is going to be putting the letters on these. I also do around here, I do um, a really cool rope. I tie a rope around it. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, and then I'll start working on the quilts and the little mini quilts and the big quilts. And we'll go from there. So here I uh, have already painted all the letters and I'm laying them all out. Um, so what I do is I kind of, I just lay them all out, line them all up. So the nice thing too about having these all in a row like this, you can really make sure that they're all identical. So uh, I'm taking E6000 glue and I am then putting glue on the back side of each letter and that is what is going to hold this on. Um, it works great. I've had no issues with the glue at all. Uh, and to complete these signs, um, it took two, um, actually basically two containers of the E6000 glue. So this whole process is very quick uh, and it really didn't, it doesn't take that long uh, to complete this. So um, once I'm finished with this, I do let these dry. Um, I let them dry for uh, like a couple hours just to make sure that everything is adhered uh, before I do the next step, which is then doing the O. So here, to create the letter O, I am using lamb's ear. So I've taken three sprigs uh, of the lamb's ear and I cut it down and I slightly bend them to create the letter O. Uh, I then use my uh, staple gun and I just staple them right on uh, and I just go down the line and do that. I think this one, um, this is what is the most tedious part of the whole project. Just because I like my O's to look perfect, I should try not to be such a perfectionist. Um, but a lot of times I'll end up pulling out the staples and restapling them just to make sure it all looks perfect. So I just take it one by one and just go right down the line, um, putting the lamb's ear on. I have thought about changing it up and even making half of them lamb's ear and the other half a different type of green. Um, the lamb's ear though seems like it's always gone over so well that I've just continued to use it. Uh, something to think about in the future though, uh, if I do make more of these uh, moving forward. And, uh, and to be honest, it's been a, a good year since I've done any shows. I've been selling these in my booth, but I'm hoping that they go over at the shows just like they did in the past. 
The one thing I would highly recommend doing is finishing the back of your signs. It just looks so much more professional if the product is complete. Uh, I guess it's just a big pet peeve of mine when I have been to different vendor events and I'm looking at other, other sign makers and I see that they do not have a finished back and I always think, really how long does it take uh, it doesn't take that long to just complete the whole sign and make it look like a finished product um, and really i'm not investing that much more money into this piece and making it look like a hundred percent better so that is my one tip um, for all you sign makers out there um, or even any um, project that you're making why try to do it halfway just complete it and make it look like you've you know it's a, a good product so um then after i'm done with this i'll show you my next step so to finish off these what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some twine and I just picked this up at um, the local Walmart. Uh, some of the twine there works good. And then just do that, flip it around, and then just wrap it around a bunch of times. And this just, I think, finishes off the whole piece. keep it nice and tight and then there you have it uh, the last thing that I do um, to these is I also price all of them right away so uh, I just try to complete as many steps in um, I mean just try to do as many steps in a row as I possibly can um, to mass produce uh, these different signs in bulk. Now, you may have thought, you know, oh my goodness, she's, you know, making so many, but I do have four shows and I've been talking about three of them. I actually had forgotten that I'm also doing Oktoberfest in downtown Appleton, which is in September. It's actually the weekend prior to Cranberry Fest. So uh, these will be for all of those shows. Plus at Cranberry Fest, I always do sell multiples of all the items. And I do have um, a U-Haul that I keep right there on site. And I don't put everything out. What I do is I do have extra of all my signs and I just go back and I pull whenever I need it. So I keep X amount of the signs out. When I start selling them, I go in, pull more. And that's what I do with like the barn quilts too. I, you know, I can only have so many of the large barn quilts out. So I do keep extra large barn quilts in there as well. So uh, it's great having the U-Haul right there to pull from it. Uh, but I hope you guys learned something to, you know, watching the video today, um, how to produce things more in bulk versus just a onesie here and there. Uh, might as well maximize your time. And I just want to thank you all for watching. Um, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if this is a type of video that you do like today. And let me know one thing that you may have learned from me um, during by watching the video. All right, so Friday I'm going to be talking about cottage core. So that has really been the talk on YouTube right now, the, that design style. Uh, I've also received a lot of comments about it, like what's the difference between cottage core, farmhouse, shabby chic, and we'll just touch base with that on Friday. So you guys have a great week. We'll see you then, and I hope you enjoyed. Bye.